Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Rudy Giuliani! All right. I broke a thousand hearts before I met you. And I'm done. Rudy Giuliani is one of my favorite politicians. No, not because I agree with his politics, but because he kind of reminds me of the mayor from Spin City. You remember that guy who did ridiculous things and you'd roll your eyes and be like, no one's that ridiculous. This is just poorly written, far-fetched comedy. But if the writers for Spin City hit a bunch of acid and then went on a brainstorming session on a camping trip in Times Square, perhaps they might be able to envision Rudy Giuliani. I mean, think of Danny DeVito as the Penguin in Batman, but much more of a sexual predator and much more shameless. For example, Rudy was just in the news for allegedly trying to sell presidential pardons for a couple million bucks. And it got me thinking we should look into his past and tell a story about how amazingly insane of a political figure he is. In today's video, we're going to dive deep into the intriguing life and times of Rudy Giuliani, a man known for his audacious character who has taken on roles from New York City's mayor to President Trump's personal attorney. And of course, we'll touch on the good stuff like the Four Seasons press conference and his run-in with Borat. Let's dive in. Let's start with how Rudy Giuliani got here. The scene, 1968. A young Rudy fresh out of law school and brimming with idealism. Shockingly enough, he was a card-carrying Democrat volunteering on Robert F. Kennedy's 1968 presidential campaign. Giuliani's first notable sign of character came when he was able to skirt military service in Vietnam thanks to a very few well-timed deferrals. He did this by becoming Judge McMahon's law clerk and earned himself a get-out-of-the-draft-free card being recategorized as an essential civilian. When his number did eventually come up in the lottery, it was high enough to keep him safely on the sidelines. Ah, the wonders of chance. By 1980, he made the full switch to being a Republican after Reagan's win. He cited a disillusionment with Democratic policies, but critics suspected a strategy to ascend within the Justice Department. One of those critics being his own mother, who suggested his Republican shift was opportunistic. Under Reagan, Giuliani spent most of the 80s serving as Associate Attorney General for the Southern District of New York, where he aimed to personally litigate cases. His prosecution of Wall Street moguls like Bosky and Milken positioned him as a strong anti-corruption figure. Known for his public perp walks, ironically, Giuliani left his U.S. Attorney post in 1989 amidst controversy over his perceived political leveraging of prosecutions. After several failed attempts, Giuliani became New York City Mayor in 1994, holding office until 2001. His term was known for shooing away sex clubs, drug dealers, and panhandlers from the Big Apple, known as the Civic Cleanup. But there was something else that really helped Rudy build his brand. Giuliani got thrown into the spotlight in 2001 after the 9-11 attacks. Let me set the stage for how much support existed for New York City at the time and how sensitive America became about the terrorist attacks. For example, at the time of the attacks, Bill Maher had Jimmy Kimmel spot on ABC for a show called Politically Incorrect. He made the following comment about Americans and how they were constantly referring to terrorists as cowards at the time. And Bill didn't agree with the use of that language. We have been the cowards lobbing cruise missiles from 2,000 miles away. Absolutely. That's cowardly. That, that is a Staying family. in the airplane yes. when it hits the building. That is Say what family. you want about it, not you know, cowards. The discussion of the use of the word coward cost Bill his show. The point that I'm trying to drive here is that when tragedy happens, decent people are supportive and sensitive to those groups. New York City saw this in spades. And with 9-11, Giuliani had an opportunistic moment. And trust me, he took full advantage of it. Consider this. After being thrust into the national spotlight, Rudy earned the title of Times Person of the Year in 2001. Again, we could have had a Siegel as mayor of New York City that year, and they would have been just as likely to be Time's Person of the Year. And then we found out this. In the aftermath of 9-11, Giuliani asserted that he was down in the trenches just as much as any other worker, soaking up the same potentially harmful elements as the hardworking folks dedicated to recovery and restoration. Sounds like a moving soliloquy, until the facts had the audacity to tell a different story. It seems the then mayor logged in a whopping 29 hours at ground zero over three months starting September 17th. If you're wondering, recovery workers chalked up this much time in a span of two to three days in the aftermath. It doesn't end there. 20 years later, he gave a speech at a 9-11 memorial dinner and showed up totally bombed. 
It's 400 miles from China, asshole. China is going to be our enemy for the next 40 years. You have an air base 400 miles from them, and you're giving it up, idiot. Christ, that is crazy. Once his mayoral term was up, Rudy began his descent into what can only be described as an endless tirade of bizarre scandals. Let's move forward to 2008. Giuliani is vying for the Republican nomination, and who do you think is there waving a flag for his campaign? None other than Donald J. Trump. And it's crazy to think, but this little troll doll actually led the polls for the Republican primaries for almost a year. Despite Trump's financial support, Rudy's campaign eventually sputtered and stalled out. But don't worry, this is just the start of their intriguing tango. You know, you're really beautiful. The spoof was filmed 16 years ago when Giuliani was mayor of New York for a charity dinner. So it was all in good fun. Oh, you dirty boy, you. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man, if only the mega loving Bud Light bashers saw this one. A few election cycles later and Trump is now the one running for president. At this point, Giuliani, comfortably settled into civilian life, sees his chance and returns the favor. Not only does he endorse Trump, but he hits the campaign trail for him, shouting his praises to the rafters. After Trump's stunning victory, the freshly elected president crowned Giuliani the coveted mantle of informal cybersecurity advisor and then created the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency in November 2018. Giuliani's credentials in cybersecurity? Well, let's just say that forgetting your iPhone's passcode and running off to the Genius Bar doesn't exactly scream cyber guru. <laughs> but, but... <laughs> <laughs> now, here's where things really start to heat up. In April 2018, Mueller was on the prowl, investigating Russian interference in the 2016 elections, and Trump's in the hot seat. Enter Giuliani, riding in like a white knight to join Trump's personal legal team and play cleanup on Isle Russia. And fast. Giuliani took a stand for the president's right not to testify in the special counsel investigation, citing a magically shifting memory as the reason. And then one of Giuliani's most memorable nuggets of wisdom came on August 19th during an episode of Meet the Press when he argued that the president could be led into a perjury trap simply by reciting someone else's version of the truth, coining the philosophical gem, truth isn't truth. It's somebody's version of the truth, not the truth. He didn't have a, a conversation about- Truth is about, truth. I, I don't mean to go like- I, No, I it isn't truth. Truth isn't truth. The president of the United States says, I didn't- Truth isn't I, truth. Mr. Mayor, do you realize what- I, I, no, I, no, th no. This is going to become a Wait, bad don't, don't, meme. Do, don't, do, don't do this to me. But here's my personal favorite Giuliani story. With the eyes of the world trained on the U.S. election results, tensions high, and Rudy Giuliani looking to defend his boy Trump, Rudy elects to call a press conference at the Four Seasons. Sounds classy, right? Trump even tweeted about it. Just one tiny problem. This wasn't the swanky Four Seasons Hotel, rather Giuliani fumbled the booking. This was Four Seasons Total Landscaping Company, a humble business nestled between an adult bookstore and a crematorium. But the show must go on despite how ridiculous it appeared to, well, everybody. Giuliani steps up to the podium knowing he's sandwiched between Fantasy Island bookstores and Delaware Valley Crematorium Center instead of sipping on a martini at a high-end hotel. He goes on to propagate Trump's claims of election fraud sans any evidence, justifying the refusal to concede the election. All the networks, wow, all the networks. The Four Seasons Hotel was quick to wash its hands of this bizarre debacle, leaving Four Seasons Total Landscaping to deal with the fallout. But what did they do? They didn't run and hide. Nope, they issued a statement emphasizing their nonpartisan, family-owned small business status and then started selling merchandise related to the event. As for the Trump campaign, they kept mum about whether this was a mistake or an intentional choice, leaving the rest of us in stitches from all the jokes flying around on social media. The Four Seasons saga will live on as a testament to Giuliani's uncanny ability to turn even the most mundane event into a spectacle of epic incompetent proportions. There's just so much more. Of course, shortly after, Giuliani showed up at a press conference making similar election claims with hair dye running down his face. The US District Court. I love how the girl in the background is just trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> more recently, Giuliani has been accused of sexual assault and running a pay for pardon scheme during Trump's final two years in office. Noel Dunphy, a former employee of Giuliani's firm from 2019 to 2021, emerged from the shadows in May 2023 and threw a lawsuit grenade into the fray. If you read the lawsuit, it's basically what you would expect. Take a look at item 108. Giuliani often demanded that she work naked in a bikini or in short shorts with an American flag on them he bought for her. When they were apart, they would often work remotely via video conference, and during those conferences, Giuliani almost always asked her to remove her clothes on camera. He often called from his bed, where he was visibly touching himself under a white sheet. It's like dating Louis C.K., but not nearly as funny. And then she told Inside Edition this. He required and expected me to be pleasing him during his calls with President Trump. So let me get this straight. Rudy demanded you give him a blow job while he talked to Trump on the phone. And then afterwards, he had you pretend that he was Donald Trump as part of some weird sexual role play. I mean, I assumed that Rudy was a freak, but that right there, folks, that is Randy and Leahy shit. Mr. Leahy, we weren't rehearsing for a play. We were practicing, Randy. It's not Halloween. We're not doing community theater. Randy. We're consenting adults. Except for the consensual part, I guess. But Dumphy also alleges Giuliani was selling presidential pardons like hotcakes for a cool $2 million a pop, with the proceeds to be split evenly with Trump. However, as of now, there's no evidence to back this up. But you know what they say. Where there's smoke, there's feathers! These allegations, while remaining unproven, are hardly shocking to anyone that watched the sequel to cult comedy Borat, the Borat subsequent movie film released in 2020. Giuliani's role in the film might be considered the piece de resistance of his screw-ups. The scene plays out like a sitcom with a side of cringe. Giuliani is in a hotel suite with an actress playing Borat's daughter, who's posing as a 15-year-old TV journalist. After the interview, our favorite gaff-prone attorney is seen reclining on the bed, tucking in his shirt, and reaching into his trousers. Now enters Borat, exclaiming that his daughter is 15 and too old for Giuliani. Put down your crumb. She's 15. She's too old for you. <laughs> Giuliani responded after the uproar upon the film's release with a tweet that reads like a desperate plea, calling the film a complete fabrication, labeling Sasha Barra Cohen as a stone cold liar and denying any inappropriate behavior. Okay, so we've taken a stroll down the scandal-ridden memory lane of Rudy Giuliani, and we've literally ran out of time to keep going because my editing staff, God bless them, only have so many hours in a day. So let's wrap it up. In the age of social media where every citizen is a potential fact checker, Rudy's style of opportunistic politics has hit a brick wall. The man who used to manipulate a handful of TV channels and newspapers for his own gain is now left scrambling in a digital landscape that refuses to let his falsehoods fly unchallenged. Social media has decentralized and democratized the media landscape in a way that we can now all laugh at just how absurd of an individual Rudy is. I mean, he's done the unthinkable. He makes Trump seem like the voice of reason, like a man of integrity. One has to wonder in his quiet moments, does even Trump look at Rudy and think, man, I've got to distance myself from this guy. It's baffling that not so long ago, this Spin City meets Batman's Penguin figure was leading the Republican primaries. In a world where politicians spin webs of untruths as a matter of routine, there's something hilariously unique about Giuliani's brand of BS. Giuliani is like a circus side show you just can't look away from. Terrifying, bewildering, and so absurd you can't help but laugh. Look, I hate all politicians and think that they're all opportunists. No one leaves a high paying job for a low paying job to be scrutinized by the public unless of course they are getting paid in some way, shape, or form. The amount of side deals Rudy must have done as mayor of New York is baffling to even begin to ponder. But don't hate the player, hate the game. Rudy is just such a mess that I think he's my favorite politician. So here's to you, Rudy, the punchline that keeps on giving, and let's just hope you never wind up with any real authority. So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. If you could do me a big favor, please let me know what you think in the comments section. Like this video, I love you all.